You've been asking for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, Geek Buying has brought us the Amaze Fit Bip. Here it is. Check the show notes for coupon and buying link. Let's go. Greetings and welcome back to Smart Watch Ticks. We've all heard of Fitbit, right? Yeah, you don't go anywhere without knowing about Fitbit. They're in every store. Well, what if I told you that in this box is a FIP BIP? That's right, a FIP BIP. What would you say? No way, Mr. Tix. Can't be. It's Fitbit, not FIP BIP. Well, you're absolutely right. It's not a FIP BIP. It's an Amaze Fit BIP. Not an Amaze Fit Fit, but an Amaze Fit BIP. All I want for Christmas is my new Fip Bip. My new Fip Bip. My new Fip Bip. There it is! The Fip Bip! Woohoo! All I want for Christmas is my little Fip Bip. My little Fip Bip. Mmm! My little Fip Bip. Yeah! I got a box. I bet you there's something in there. I love holiday time. And we have the nice TPU type of a band. Heart rate monitor, charging little goodies down there. This thing is small. Can you see how thin that is? I'm going to have to give you a measurement on that later once I get my tools. The bands are removable. You can change them, put whatever you want on. Yeah, I'll give you the measurements on that too. Let's take off the cover. Oh my gosh. You can actually see the screen is lit up wanting to pair to a phone. I haven't even charged it. It's been in the mail all this time. Wow. Okay, I'm going to charge it, download the associated app, get it all paired, and we will be back. Woohoo! Hey, not so fast, cowboy. What's in the box? You're going to do an unboxing. Unbox it, all right? There's a whoa. It's a whoa. How in the world does this work? No, oh, I don't mean the rubber band. I've got that figured out. Duh. How does this thing work? I have no idea. Well, there's a little thing. Looks like it's a cutout for the knob. There's the charging ports. Don't tell me that you can, like, tuck that. Oh, that is so... That's so cute. Wow. All right, with the wire hanging out, I think you can just set it down and charge it like that way and have it on your nightstand. Maybe be able to see the time at night. Well, that's cute. It's going to be crazy if you think you need to take this with you in your pocket. You need one for work and for home. Thank goodness it's got such a long life. You probably can just leave this by your bedside and throw it in there once in a while. Oh, <laughs> well, we'll give that a try too. There's something else peeking out. Could it be a user manual? Yeah, now we know what app we got to download. The MyFit. Scan that code. You can do that right off of YouTube, you know, and you can download it. Yep, there's how you put it in the charging dock. How you Bluetooth it to connecting it to your phone. Okay, some notes, more notes, safety notice. Oh, yeah, Amaze fits the one that goes through a whole bunch of this legal stuff, too. Specifications. Disposing of it, warranty and return information with some addresses and web addresses. What else? Anything on this side? Yeah, the whole thing in Chinese. So the user's manual consists of plug it in and charge it, download the app, pair it with your phone. Nothing else. Well then, so what exactly is inside the AmazeFit bit? Here's the specifications. Hardware is a Xiaomi device. It uh, has an IP68 waterproofing. That means you can swim with it, shower with it. Cold showers only, remember. Doesn't like hot water. None of these devices do. Got a health rate monitor, of course. Does call reminder, info push. And yes, it actually pushes the writing to the screen. So you're able to read what it says. It connects with uh, Bluetooth 4.0. A little 1.28 inch, 176 by 176 inch pixel touch screen display with a 190 milliamp hour battery. In the watch mode, it'll last, are you looking at that? Four months. Running mode, about 45 days. 
and almost a full 24 hours when you have GPS running at the same time. Pretty darn good. All right, it's Corning Gorilla Glass on the front of it. The bandwidth is 20 millimeters. Hey, I don't have to measure it. I probably will anyway. And it comes with all these things in the package. So when you get it and you look at it, you don't turn it on, it's always on. Notice that, it's always on. But it's gonna be in this mode. Now, word of warning, everybody, you won't be able to even experiment with this thing unless you pair it to your phone. It is required. You can't use it as a standalone watch, not at all. It is required that you pair this device to the MyFit app on your phone before you can go forward. So we got to jump over to the app. Now, while I have your attention, let me tell you something important. The MyFit app allows you when you open it to create an account. But I've seen on the web and heard from other folks that if you do that, you may not be able to log in. So if you're having difficulty getting, uh, even getting into the app and logging into it to get to this page, try this. Go to your computer. Go to um, the, the address I'm going to put down below that'll take you to the um, My uh, Login page to create your own My Account. Okay, that's like saying Apple Account or Samsung Account. My, M-I is the account that you set up. You create your account there with the username, which is an email address or your phone number and a password. Get that all set up there. Then come back to the MyFit app and log in. Don't create the account in the app, but log into the app after you've created it on a computer. You can try it, but if it doesn't work, come back here because you'll be glad you did. You'll have to start over and do it over on the computer. Once you have the account set up, once you have logged into the account from my Fit app, it takes you to this page where you get to go through and put in whatever you want to be called. I'm SWT for smartwatch ticks. You have your gender and you have to actually select all of this stuff. I'm just going to take defaults. Five feet, seven inches. Okay, it's in English. Pounds down to decimals. That was interesting. And once you've done that, then you can say next. You set your activity goal. It's all saved. And now we are at our home screen where it says no paired devices. We're going to tap it. We're going to pair a band. The following data will be collected after you pair the device. We say OK. Access to location services is required. Got it. Allow it to access our location. Yes. Let's try it again. Searching. OK. I've got the band here close by. You know, this might actually uh, be considered a watch rather than a band. Let's try that. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. They're talking about the BIP being a watch instead of a band. I guess that makes sense. So we're going to pair to the BIP. Aha! Confirm. Pairing to the watch. Yes. We'll say check mark. Pairing. It's taking its time. Hmm, that's got the little lines back there again. Paired successfully. Updating resources. Whoa, all right, look at that. It's sending some stuff to the device. Well, that took a while. And now it's updating and updating and updating. Well, it finished updating and I've had a couple of days to go out and play with this little watch and I'm going to show you how it works. Let's set the app aside for now. Oh, see it just light up. It's got that automatic backlighting when you twist your wrists and it'll light up, which in the dark, it would be otherwise pretty hard to see. So you can have it in the dark or in the light. I have a 
flashlight shining down right now to give you that brilliant bright screen that we all want to look at. And of course, out in the bright sunlight, it's going to look just as bright, if not brighter. Let's begin. One button, that's all we've got. Screen is locked, can't do anything. It is a touch screen device. So you first have to push the button. Watch carefully, here we go. Brrrr. You like that? That said, I'm unlocked. Now, with it unlocked, I can scroll down and I have a do not disturb mode that I can just tap, turn on now, or set it up to go on automatically based on settings that you have, and come back up. When you scroll up, you're going to go into notifications, of which I have one, so I'm just going to go to page two of the notification that doesn't give away much information, and um, the entire screen filled with the notice, and then there was more, so I scrolled it again to see the second page. So you have the ability to see the push notifications of all of the apps that you specify. Uh, this was a credit card app, actually, telling me that I had made a purchase, where I made it, how much it was, and so forth. And that's just a standard app. So your WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, all the other kind of things can push written information to the screen, but you cannot answer them from the band or the watch. Uh, you can only read them. So those are the two things you've got scrolling down and scrolling up. Press again to activate. If I go to the left, nothing happens, but if I go to the right, I go through a variety of things, including status, activity, weather, alarm, timer, compass, and settings. And it doesn't loop. So to press the button, you'll go back. Let's go through status. When I tap here, and unfortunately, I don't have a lot to show you. I wish I could have shown you yesterday well over 10,000 steps and all sorts. All this stuff was filled up. Right now, it's a new morning. It's brand new at zero. No blood pressure, but look, it's trying. It's got two diodes in it, really tiny ones on the sides, and it's looking for my body to give me reflection back in there. You saw it went off after it slowed down. That's good. It's telling me it's not going to read air. It's given up until it actually sees that my body is there. When it does, it should start back up again. See? And it's, you know how this works, right? It's called PPG and the light, the green laser is shining into my skin Turn it back on again. And um, it reflects off of the blood pulsing through the capillaries in my skin, whether it's my fingertip or the tip of my nose or, ideally, on my arm. Well, it should be starting up. Let's come out of status and let's go back into it. And there it is. And now I'll just uh, leave it here for a moment. It doesn't take too long and it'll acquire the uh, heart rate. And then you can uh, check that heart rate against other instruments that you've got. Make sure that it looks like it's correct for you. I'll have more about that in a follow-up video we'll be doing uh, on this one, where I'm going to compare this watch with a very similar one called the uh, 3S. And they really look very similar, but they're totally different in what they do or how they do it. Okay, in the reflection, you see I'm getting 69 beats, and then it pops out of that after time and goes back to your screen display, which is locked. Okay, let's go beyond status into activity. Here is where you can do the variety of activities directly on the watch, outdoor running, which includes GPS, treadmill, which obviously does not, cycling, which includes GPS, and walking, which does not, and then an activity history report, of which I have a whole bunch of goodies to show you. Lots of different things that I've done. Lots and lots of different things that I've done. In the GPS realm, that's with cycling or running. Uh, because I wanted to get tracks. And, you can press one to go back. Here, you have activity settings. We'll go through that settings. You can turn on auto pause, so if you're stopping and taking a water break while you're running or cycling, it will, uh, of course, pause everything and start back up again when you begin. Your heart rate can be set to notify you when the beats are above a certain threshold. This really works, definitely. 
In fact, I had to bump mine up to 130 because it was going off all the time when it went above 120 that I had it set on. And I got to stop talking and keep moving. I can see that. That was in activity in the settings, heart rate. You can see it's incremental. Some of these will go by 10. But, you know, if you want to do 125 beats, that's fine. You can do that. Or you can turn it off completely. There's no save button. It just takes it when you go back. There's a pace alert. You can notify if you are slower than 5 minutes 58 seconds or whatever you set it for. So if you're a runner and you know your pace that you want to keep, you have that. And then there's a distance alert. And you can have it vibrate when it reaches a certain number of miles. Cycling, it was set for 5. Running, set for 1. And of course, you can turn that on or off as well. That's all in the activity settings of the one, two, three, four activities. Remember that when we compare it with the three S. You have running, treadmill, walking, and uh, cycling. Cycling, the report back will come in speed of miles per hour, whereas outdoor running will show you your pace. So let's take a look at some of those activities that we've accomplished. First of all, some of them are stored in the watch, but not all of them. After they get transferred out, you see that it says to view more of them, head on over to the, uh, the app. So let's take a look at some of what we've got here. Let's try this one here. First, you see the track. Without a Google map, you see the overall track. You're gonna be seeing this one actually in the app. Here is uh, some of the information about it. Because it's a running one, it's talking about pace, heart rate, calories burned, the uh, step frequency, which is interesting. That's computed along with the stride. Uh huh. Uphill and downhill changes in uh, altitude are on there as well. So for the running app, that's what you get. For something like the cycling app, You'll get a track, looks like that. You get total time and uh, riding time. And what was that? Average speed in miles per hour or kilometers per hour if you uh, switch it, uh, the units. Your top speed and your climbing information. Four, four point, uh, or your, your total distance, 4.75 miles. Uphill and downhill in feet uh, rise and fall in terms of your altitude change as well. And that's in cycling. And so what I've got here are cycling and running um, GPS tracks. All of them are different. And it's just the little track itself. You can't zoom on it. You can't double tap it to go any closer. But it gives you a brief idea of what the track looked like. For more details, you need to see it in the app. And that's pretty much what the activity history is all about. That is everything in activity, which was the second tab over. Then you get to weather. It basically shows you the high and the low, I presume, for your area and um, the current condition. It's sunny. And it's showing you that the predictions are for showers coming up. It goes uh, a few days I found that the last two days it doesn't quite get, so it does the first ones, though, just fine. And that's the weather. After weather, we can go in and turn on uh, alarms Monday through Friday, every day. You have all those different options. You can do a stopwatch type of a timer. If I don't hit it and slide, there we go. Uh, you cannot move out of this mode, though. When you're in the stopwatch, it has to be, you have to stay there, which I find is a drawback, because it would be really nice if you could uh, leave here, because as soon as you try to leave, well, you can't slide to get out of it. You can pause it. You can start it up again. You can do lap times, tiny little lap times. You see there, and it only shows the last one until... You come back here to your listing, and you have to push the button to get out. 
and you want to say stop the stopwatch, if you say cancel, you go back into it. If you say OK, it resets it, and that's how you can leave it. So that's how stopwatch works. And then countdown timer, you can set a number of minutes or seconds you want, and you can start it. It gives you the countdown. I'm feeling a vibration, and then there's a long vibration, like four, but in between, it was giving me little ticks to let me know that that vibration was happening. And of course, you can leave that as well. Next, after timer, which again, in the timer, had stopwatch or countdown. From timer, you go to compass. Compass is pretty accurate. North is pointing toward me. Oh, wait a minute. It's not way over there. Oftentimes you need to go in a figure eight to calibrate these things. And even if it doesn't say calibrate, I guess it's a good idea to do it. Especially if you're around anything magnetic. Now I've got the phone that I'm filming with. I've got my other phone over here. There could be magnetic influences, but I don't want to make excuses for it. There. Now it's pointing toward me, which is good. If I go over like here, watch it flip around. And get it in the light. Yeah. So you got a little compass, shows you where north is, and it shows you the degree of uh, that you're pointed in, where the arrow is headed. And that's the compass. Then you've got your overall settings from the watch. Go back into this one, which is where we can change the watch face. Long press on the side button can do a variety of things. I'll tell you about that. You can actually adjust the brightness. And then there's an overall about. There's the firmware and Bluetooth address. And you can turn the whole thing off if you want to, to save battery power. Let's go back up to these. Adjusting the brightness lets me change the backlighting. So I want to block this out for a moment and change the backlighting. You see that? Oh. Now I've had it set on maximum and at outside it's pretty good. You can, well, I mean, it's great outside because you don't need the light. But indoors, when you have bright sunshine around, somewhat like this, and you're not in the sunlight, well, anyway, you can play with the brightness to get the setting just the way you want it for the backlight. In fact, I think I'm going to leave it at three now and try that. The long press of the side button lets you quickly go into your favorite um, activity. There's all of these, or you can have, you can turn off this pre long press of the side button doing anything. For me, I set it for cycling because that's the one that I'm using the most to do my tests. But all of the four different sport activities, outdoor running with GPS, treadmill without it, walking without it, and running. Now, outdoor running, treadmill, and cycling. And cycling is the one that I've got it set on, and it does do the GPS. And how that works, and I'll show you in a second, is we long press and we go right into the process as if I'd selected it from activity. So that's a nice shortcut. Then we have set the watch faces. Here is the standard analog watch face that comes with this, and that's what it looks like. If you want a different one, and this is where it's going to be a pain, I got to go all the way over into settings, into set the watch faces, and I scroll up. You can have a big digital one like that, or this busy white one. Now this is really good when you don't have the, the reflective light on it. When it comes on, it's really easy to read with that backlight. And because the backlight is the brightness it is, and it's an LCD type of a screen, it's not actually costing you more battery power to have this bright white screen than it is to have a dim dark one, like that one, the original one. So your choice. You got a nice bright one. You can use it almost as a flashlight or subdued. I can say OK. When I hit the back button, well, it actually went back automatically. There it is, and it's set. Let's get back over here. Don't want to waste your guys' time. And look at the rest of them. So you had that one. You have that one. You had that one. Then we've got this sexy one. Look at that with the blue uh, big digits, your step count, the date. And then this really interesting busy one here. 
And you don't get it until you set it to show you what the data are and where the little things are moving in the color part of the screen. And again, I don't have a lot of data to show you, unfortunately, for today, but it would show you all those different numbers, calories burned, steps taken, your weather is shown, the date, all of that. Interesting, huh? Okay. There's a couple more. And then there's still more that you can actually download from the app. You like my roosters? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I live way out near the base of a rainforest, and it gets pretty wild out here. And there's this one. This one's pretty nice. You have this one here. A red one. And a big white analog one. Let's cover that so you can see. And those are the selection of watch faces available to you. On the BIP, we did the uh, setting of the watt faces, the, that one, the, that one. So we've covered everything there is in settings. Settings is the last tab. So we've covered everything that's in the watch. Now it's time to bring over the app and look at the app to watch integration. Any questions? Down, gave you the do not disturb. It shows you the battery. I'm at what, 69%? And I've had this for three days now. A lot in use, a lot of GPS data collection. Uh, it just doesn't need charging. Does a great, great job. Oh, look, it went back to that one, I guess, because I didn't save it completely when I was setting it up. Well, we'll leave it on this one. All right, I'm going to go chase the roosters and bring over the phone, and let's look at the app. So watch what happens when you launch the MyFit app. It loads up. You've logged in now, right? And boom, look at this. Isn't that pretty? You got this like dragon going around in a circle as it synchronizes the band with the watch. There's more synchronizing data going on and you're done. And it gives you all sorts of information. Um, once again, you have to create an account. You won't even be able to get into this device unless you create an account and log in and link the MyFit app to your AmazeFit BIP. The app and the bit got to go together. Here we are. We are on the status page where we have information. Then there's an activities page, which lists all of these different activities available to you and a start button. And then there's your overall profile page. So let's break them down. Take them quickly. Right here is your overall step count for today and uh, the miles you've walked and the calories you've burned. The last activity tab shows you not just the last one, but the last several in sequential order of activities that you've completed. I did three of them yesterday, day before yesterday. I did all these on Thanksgiving Day. And uh, this is the, the chart so far, so far showing those activities. On a weekly schedule, that's all of them over the week. This would be all of them over the month. And this is all of them ever, if you want a really long scrolling list. So you get your uh, complete information chronologically when you tap on your last activity. Your heart rate now shows you chronologically the heart rate data that's been collected. And you could go into any one of these. It tells you it's a, it's a resting heartbeat and an overall guide to the levels that you need for your age and demographic information in order to get weight uh, reduction or aerobic or your anaerobic zone, all of that stuff. And you could delete a specific reading if it's erroneous, if you'd like to. That's the heart rate. We will be going into all of these in a minute. I'm not skipping all of that, just a lot of stuff. So you get access into your activities. Oh, look at this. Look at this when you go up. How's that for attention to detail, huh? By the way, this is my little uh, tracker for 10,000 steps. I barely got started today, but when you complete them, that little wheel lights goes all the way around. Here's sleep time. This is last night's sleep. This is really information, interesting information and kind of bizarre. I got 86 points. I didn't even know I was trying to get points. 
It says that I slept better than 72% of users, and this is really sad because, folks, I only got 32 minutes of deep sleep. I got seven, almost eight hours of light sleep, and I was awake 18 minutes. I think getting a glass of water and going to the bathroom probably right about then, just before waking up. Yeah, my deep sleep time is too short, but catch this. My sleep regularity, this tells me all sorts of stuff. I uh, fell asleep 22 hours and one minute late. I think that's off somehow like 24 hours, you know. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I fell asleep two hours early. Hey, could it be uh, for a different night, you know. Uh, nonetheless, this is what it's telling me. Two hours and 12 minutes is added to the total sleep. It shows a cup of coffee. <laughs> I guess I got up. I don't know. I don't know. Do you, does this make sense to you? 30 minutes reduced from deep sleep. Uh, compare with the average sleep data in the last... What's that say? The, the moon is in the way. Something days. Uh, compared with similar users, I fell asleep earlier than 99%. <laughs> I, get, I guess I do. <laughs> um, there's a, a bell curve of when people fall asleep. And must, there must be a lot of nightlife, folks, because I'm after 2100, and I fell asleep before 99%. I have longer deep sleep than 1% of the people, and I only slept deep for 32 minutes. Hello, everybody. It's time you get some sleep. <laughs> How do I feel? Well, I feel ridiculous. But that's not an option because I uh, can choose one of these. But I, I woke up and I felt good. I wasn't really energetic. I wasn't sleepy. Um, not a whole lot of options, but I just put good. And that's the only thing I have actual control of. Everything else here, you see, has been reported back to me. Now, I have a history that I can get to here that shows me each of these different nights. This was today, meaning last night. I have the day before, and this is the data that I got on that day. But I don't think I can get actually into it to show it to you. You know, that whole statistical analysis? But it shows that I had uh, an hour of deep sleep, five hours of light sleep, when I fell asleep, when I woke up, and my awake time. And I click on this one. And you see the numbers change. And that's daily, or total for the week, or total for the month. Interesting. You can get a running average, if you will, of your monthly changes in sleep habits. Not night by night, which might fluctuate, but month by month, or week by week. That's nice. Then you got a little thing up here that you can... Bring it out here. Oh, whoa. I haven't seen this one. All right. This is where SWT is me, last night's sleep points, the basic information that I could share to any of these, and I guess the ones that are highlighted I actually have installed. And that looks like I could download it to gallery. So I saved that as a picture. Oh, interesting. Then I can send it to whoever I want to, I guess, by email or SMS, MMS. Okay, that's the report on last night. And to see the whole report from what it looks like to me, you have to have, uh, it's the current one. Uh, the day before just gives you the summary. However, we can do that whole save thing to gallery or send, oh no, that's just that report. Oh, sorry. I guess you're going to have to do screenshots if you want to save this information. At least you got it, and you know how to get into your history for your last night's sleep. Weight gives you your weight information, and this is generic information. I just took the defaults that they've got in here. But you had to have to manually put in a change in weight. This is current weight, and I guess that shows you for your age and whatnot, and your height, the range of weights. The green zone is normal, 117 to 159.3. Zoom out, zoom in. If 
I had more data, maybe it would work. You can add a new weight here. Let's say I went up to uh, 139.3. Okay, now I've got a new current weight and a new change in the chart. See how all that works? And then I could delete that. And it's gone. Stuff you can play with if you're in a weight management program that gives you good tracking of how well you're doing against uh, your desired goals or, or against them. Then you can reach a goal every day for two days in a row, start a streak, and I've only done it for two days. Here's today just beginning for the third day, and that's an option too. Now, all of these things that you're seeing here you can rearrange the order that they show up in, or you can delete them. Oh, when you pull down, it goes through and it sinks again as well. And that's that information, with the exception of the activities. So let's get into the activities. This is where it gets really fun. Now, you remember this thing does two things that have GPS and two that don't. There's a treadmill and walking that don't, and there's running and cycling that do. And the don'ts, don't interest me. Um, they accumulate your data. I don't have a treadmill to stand and run in place. And walking is like, eh, okay. But I mean, I, I use the running one when I'm walking because I like the GPS. And I'll show you why. Uh, let's pick a couple of these. Here's one, uh, an outdoor running yesterday. I'm going to go in here. It's going to bring up a chart. It's going to zoom into a map. And there's the map. Now, Here's the actual track, and it's a real close-up because that's a building, if you can see right there. Uh, and this is the Google Maps, and I can turn the Google, or I can, uh, this one's for miles, and I don't, this isn't even a full mile, so I'll show you that on another one. This one is for the map. I can turn the map off and just have the track. So if you want to just look at the track itself without the clutter of a map behind it, you have that ability. This is on, toggle on off for Google Maps, and it's only one kind of Google Map. You're not able to uh, make it a, uh, uh, what do you call, satellite view or any of that. It's just the standard Google Map on and off. And like I said, this will be for miles, and we'll show you that in a minute. But this is for, uh, and you can move it around, do all of those things with the track. Zoom it however you'd like to deal with it. Summary down here at the bottom, and it's all based around pace because running is about pace, cycling is about miles per hour, calories burned in time, whatnot. Then you get your more detailed information here. There you've got your overall time, uh, miles accumulated with the date and time it happened, and all of these things. In the heart rate, during the time that you are in that exercise period, your heart rate is being calculated. And unfortunately, a lot of these are truncated on the numbers. They, they didn't leave enough space. But you can see that uh, seven minutes of light uh, heart rate or light activity, and then uh, five minutes were in the heart or the weight zone of the heart rate uh, calculation. And it could go all up into aerobic and anaerobic and beyond your maximum if you um, were exercising to that level. So this is about your overall details. This is about your pace and you get a, a chart for every mile that you're walking. And I presume metric, if you switched it to metric, it'd be every kilometer, uh, the pace and uh, time. And then um, your fastest and your slowest show up. And then a chart. Now here's the chart that's actually showing you against elapsed time uh, your pace, your overall pace. And here is a matching chart matching the same times with your heart rate. And here is altitude, how you've changed from baseline, I guess, going up and down. Uphill steps or change in feet and down down change in feet overall so you could use this for hiking or climbing as well as uh, the overall category of running just remembering that the main thing running is tracking for you is your pace a comment now um and again i'm going to invite you to watch these uh, comparison video 
Hello, roosters. <laughs> yeah, I shoo them away and they come back. So sorry. Um, the comparison video between the Amaze Fit Bip and the uh, 3S, uh, because we're going to find a difference in the heart rate. I'm seeing that this particular band is giving me an excessively high heart rate beyond what I normally would be at, because... I was really just walking. I wasn't doing a heavy uh, running. This is uh, around the buildings, through the lobby area. And having this kind of a heart rate was not true. I can guarantee you that. And I was wearing both watches at the same time, and the other watch is much lower. So watch the comparison video. One red flag for this one is your heart rate uh, may not be correct. It may be reading excessively high. And that is all about running including the routes. Now, when we get into cycling, here's a cycling one. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to let it zoom in on the chart, which it's doing. And I'm going to turn off the Google. So you just basically see my overall track. This is where now we can see the miles. If I click this, it started from here, and there's a ticker at each and every mile marker along the route. And if you have it against your Google Maps, you'll be able to, of course, see the uh, layout uh, of the direction that you're running or cycling, or in this case, riding passenger with Mrs. Tix in a car while I'm playing with both of the watches. Really cool thing about the comparison video coming up. I've got some live video of my arm with both watches on it, going, driving, accelerating, decelerating, uh, and you got to see that. You definitely got to see that. But for now, we're covering this app. Shows you the summary of data here. Details for cycling are slightly different because we're talking miles per hour instead of pace. Here's the heart rate, burned calories, uphill, downhill statistics. Same kind of thing now in the uh, heart rate zone, uh, just like before. And now we've got the gradient change in terms of a pie chart. Okay, 24 something, that must have been 30. It's off the chart again, and 38% here of uh, when you were on flat land going uphill or going downhill, which is really cool if you're doing uh, cycling. You got your speed by mile. You can see your fastest mile. You can see your slowest mile in miles per hour and your overall average speed. Nice. Again, this is car data, but it's just showing you how the app works. So you can map it in your mind to what it would look like if you're cycling. Here you go with uh, your speed chart against elapsed time mapped next to your heart rate. Again, showing heart rate as I'm sitting passenger in a car approaching 130 beats per minute. Mm. And then here's an altitude change. You can see we went uphill that much and downhill that much over the duration of the car ride or the bike, if you're doing that. I've got uh, two different icons up here now. I've got a camera where I can, oh, it doesn't let me access the camera. Okay, I got to set up the per permissions in Android for all of that. I don't know why it's giving me a camera. Maybe I take a picture of where I'm at or something. Uh, and then I've got the export thing as before. And I'm going to save that. And I guess that saved this entire three charts to my gallery. Speed, your overall details, and then your route which you can zoom in or out however you would like to do related to cycling. Walking and uh, treadmill, um, I don't have any data on that. I did the ones that have the GPS on them, and that's all of the stuff in the last activity. There's a lot of them, but they're all cycling and running entries, and it keeps track of all of those as a running history. And that's status. Now when we go over to activities, Here's where we can select an activity like walking and we can say start. Now, it wants me to go to a better place with GPS. Maybe walking is doing uh, um, GPS. We'll have to check that. Resume. Monitor heart rate during workouts. Got it. Okay, it's giving me a countdown. 
And now without me actually starting it on the watch itself, it appears to be doing uh, all of its data collection on the app. Now maybe it's using the GPS in the phone. I could spend months working with these things and discover new stuff. Uh, some of this you're just going to have to discover on your own. It's getting a heart rate. I presume that's being uh, sent from the watch directly here now. Obviously the phone's not getting the heart rate. Where the GPS is coming from, I presume, is going to be also the band, but it could be coming from uh, the phone. I can pause it. Right? Wow, what's up? Oh, I have to slide it? Wow, I have to, like, slide it. Wow! All right, I guess it's actually using the phone as the app. Well, you can download the MyFit app, create an account, not even get the band. I don't know, maybe you couldn't get here unless you link to the... Uh, what You can give it a try and see if you could uh, actually do this, this whole thing, on, on your own, uh, with just your phone. Outdoor treadmill, outdoor... Oh, that's outdoor running, and then outdoor biking. Start this one just to show you. Now, it didn't ask for GPS, but I guess it's already got GPS. Again, I don't know from here or here, but it's going to get the heart rate for me. It's going to show your distance, calculated, I presume, by GPS. And it's already showing a 0.61 miles per hour, and I'm just sitting here. Okay, it's dropping down. Which brings me to the second most important thing I want to tell you about, which again you're going to see in the comparison video with the 3S. Because these two limitations are not evident in the 3S that I'm finding in the BIP. That is, the other one, it now has to do with its GPS speed. Whether it's pace or whether it's miles per hour, it's not instantaneous. It's behaving as if it's a moving average. For example, if I started accelerating right now up to 15 miles an hour, this would go two, four, six, and it might hit 15 miles an hour in about 30 seconds to a minute to hit the actual speed. Uh, all other GPS devices I've seen, including the, S, the 3S, they're there like right away, within two seconds. It takes maybe three ticks of the GPS uh, coordinates for it to calculate velocity. Remember from your calculus class that if you take the, in, the if you integrate distance, you get speed. If you integrate speed, you get acceleration. We don't get acceleration, of course, but when you, when you have the dots that show you where you are and you integrate that over time, you get speed. And that speed is pretty darn accurate uh, because I monitored the speedometer that Mrs. Tix was driving in the car together with the readout on both of these watches and found that the speed in miles per hour on the 3S matched the odometer or speedometer Whereas on, uh, on this one, it's sluggish. It's uh, really got like a, if you came to a screeching halt, it might take a minute for it to go down to zero. And it's still showing positive right now here. Um, workout pause. Workout pause. Oh, it actually spoke to me. We're going to end in this session. And just mention over here, if I were to, oh yeah, yeah, watch this. If I press and hold, it goes directly into the activity I've set, in this case cycling, and it's looking for the GPS, which I would need in order to show you the speed issue. So I'm not going to be able to go through that. You watch it on the video. It'll, it'll, I'll show you on a video on that comparison thing. But last thing I want to say on that is um, it, it looks like that this whole section is uh, available for you to do the workouts directly using uh, the phone. Uh, in activities and that we're actually seeing an issue possibly with the accuracy of the GPS calculated speed in your workouts. The last tab is profile. Here's kind of a summary of a different take at it. Average steps, total miles and reached goal. I am connected to the Amaze Fit BIP and that's my battery level. So from the 
phone if you want to see a quick look at your battery level go to profile and it'll show you right there you can add another device if you want your amaze fit pace for example you can change or set your goal you can adjust your weight right here your your goal weight okay uh, you can add friends who are members of the my.com network you can add accounts and sync data with from the band to these different outputs that's a nice feature that you're not finding on very many devices at all so if you actually want more of a an accumulated record of your information than what you're going to find in the app because it's only in the app the bip might be it or the definitely the pace because you can export to wechat qq or more importantly to google fit because this i hope is where you would actually get your all all of your data out because google fit is a fitness app for that purpose haven't done it something for you to explore or check the comments down below if any of you are doing these things um Please leave your comments down on how well it works, if, if it's uh, something that's useful to you, and it'll help other folks in, in their buying decision for these devices. You can uh, have activity alerts remind you to browse the activity status daily at 9.30 p.m. I don't think so. <laughs> By 9.30 p.m., I'm done. <laughs> You have wake up notifications and you can turn that on to remind you to view your sleep information in the morning in case you forgot to wake up, right? <laughs> okay, behavioral tagging. Wow, jump rope, run, sit ups and so forth. Behavioral tagging. Let's look at my eating behavior. I'm gonna keep this device no further than five meters from your phone. Make sure there are no objects between them. Put the band on the dominant hand and make sure the measurements are correct. I'm going to start. I don't, I don't know what's happening here. I haven't gone into here before. Okay. Shows a picture of the band. Shows some time. Yum, 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 yum. I'm eating. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, that was good. Now what? I pause. Oh, to pause, I got to slide up and end it in the session, uploading to the My Cloud, My Eating Experiences for 17 seconds. Wow, I go into history and I ate between then and then on that date. I guess it's a diary? <laughs> sure, sit. Start. This is an easy one. And there it goes. Now I'm going to bail out of here. It won't let me. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Look at this. Is that my arm? It's my arm. Look at that. Oh, this is fun. Okay. I love discovering with you together. It's so much more fun this way than when I know what I'm doing. Yawn. Uh, wow, the heart rate really changes. Huh. Okay, no idea what's going on. I can turn an offer on. I can expand it to make it the whole page. Ho ho! Ho ho! You gotta get a bit just for this, folks. This is just too much. An accelerometer here that I can also have all three degrees. Oh, where's my lightsaber? Okay, X, Y, and Z acceleration. Totally useless data. Absolutely. Totally useless data, but a lot of fun. And that is, you can see it modified my behavior. Oh, no, it's uploading now. They're going to know in China that I mess around when I sit. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Um, got me blushing. Okay, that's behavioral tagging. <laughs> it, it did change my behavior. And then settings. Oh, get us out of here. Units. Here's where I can change back to metric if I want. And set units for weight to even gin. How much does a gin weigh? 500 grams. 
and go back to metric. And so our units are changed. Show status in notification shade. Receive phone alerts when the watch is connected. That's on. You can check for updates. And I did have update. You saw that at the very beginning. That took forever. And then there's an about. And this is version 316 with that algorithm and your legal information. And of course, you can enroll in a user experience program and they'll monitor your acceleration for you. That, in addition to sign out, is everything related to settings here. But wait, there's more. See the icon in the upper corner here? I'm going to click on that one, bring it in here, and I'm going to show you that with my account number hidden, I can put in my Nickname, gender, date of birth, height, and weight, which are all the things you're going to be needing for doing the proper calculations for your uh, calories burned and such. And if I actually click on the Amaze Fit BIP, I get into the overall settings for the device itself. Here, check this out. I can do watch face settings by adding in da 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 more watch faces that aren't originally on the watch itself. Right now it's downloading those from the server, and here they are. So there's a few different new watch faces. I can select this one and sync it to the watch. It's downloading over here. And we can add that watch face. Now, I don't know if there's a way to add additional ones beyond the ones that are represented here in the app itself, or when they update the app, they may add more of them. But uh, we got a few new ones on here, and it's been selected, and it's there. And that's our new watch face from all of these. Okay. We also have the screen unlock capability, which tells you how to go into security and set up a screen unlock capability on the device. And um, then it's locked. You have incoming call notification you can turn on and doing so will allow you to show contact information on your watch and all of that. You have a watch alarm, which is a basic uh, alarm that you can set from the app in the phone pushed out to the watch. So you don't have to go messing around with it over there. The overall app alerts will let you go into all of your apps and select which ones you want it to uh, activate for pushing notifications to your watch. You have an idle alert, which is your sedentary uh, reminder, a period of time that you don't want it to uh, bother you. Uh, and you can uh, be reminded every hour. You apparently can't change that. It's on a one hour re uh, basis. And there's more. We have incoming SMS that you can turn on to allow text messages and your overall goal notifications when you reach a new goal can be activated as well. All that stuff is here. Find the watch causes it to vibrate can't see anything, but I'm feeling the vibration. Discoverable turns on the discovery mode, uh, so it's visible, the app, I guess, to other devices. You can choose which wrist you want the band to be located on, your right or your left hand. Interesting. And the lift wrist to view info will be uh, turned off during the silent period that you select here. And that's really nice, so it doesn't go on in the middle of the night when you're sleeping. Start time and end time. You can have it all day turn on time, the schedule time, or turn it off completely if you don't want that background lighting to happen at all. Cool, a lot of stuff there. That was in the Amaze Vip, Bip. Amaze fit bip section of your overall profile. When we go back to activities, just to wrap things up, there was a setting up here as well that you can set it to um, pause automatically if it sees that you're not moving. The text to speech, we heard somebody talking. You can have it set to keep the screen on all the time on your phone. This is related to the app. I'm pretty sure, and display information on the lock screen if you'd like that as well. That's all happening 
in the activities. And back on the status, the last thing to cover, we looked at all of these, I'm going to touch this one, where your current step count is. And look, it's showing you bars which aren't scrollable or movable, but I guess you can move. Oh, there's yesterday. Cool. Um, yesterday was awesome. Today, I got that many steps. It shows you a little bit of information related to your activity for the day, your maximum and your minimum. And if I scroll back to yesterday, here's a whole bunch of other information that you have there. So you can see each of your day's activity by tapping here. So you got to learn all the places you go into and look for little hidden icons in the corners and such in order to make this app work. And that's a complete synopsis of the app. So let's summarize. You have been watching the Amaze Fit BIP unboxing and review. You have learned that this has got an always on screen, but it does have a light in it so you can twist and get it to light up in the dark or just have some good ambient light or sunlight shining on it and you'll see the really bright uh, memory LCD screen in action. This is a really cool fitness watch if you're a walker, a runner, or a cycler. Uh, other sports aren't really covered that well, but it does a good job on those, uh, especially when uh, you take into consideration it has a built-in GPS. It appears there could be some issues related to the accuracy of the heart rate. It looks like it's running a bit high when it's hitting your uh, heart rate while you're moving. And um, the speedometer and pace setter calculations, your movement speed based on the GPS looks a little off, as if it's averaging it over time rather than giving you instantaneous speed. And that would throw you off if you're doing something that in, where you're, you're moving uh, erratically, faster or slower. If you're trying to just keep a steady pace while you're running, the average might be great. It might look more accurate, um, but it's up to you. That's one of the things we're seeing in this one. It's a nice band, TPU uh, band on it, and lightweight, definitely slim unit. And uh, comes to us from our good friends at Geekbind. Ta-da! <laughs> I like them. And uh, thank you, Geekbind. They really, really pushed hard to get this one out here before the holiday season. So you guys have a chance to, to, to think about it. And down in the uh, show notes below is the buying link. It can take you over there to pick this one up. And don't forget your acceleration and heart rate. That was a discovery we found in the app. The tethering apps on these devices are as important, if not more so, than the device itself because the device is a sensor collecting the information, but the app is kind of where all the magic happens. All right, you've been watching Smart Watch Sticks. Really appreciate your subscription. Do come back, folks, and watch the comparison of this one with this one. Uh-huh, yeah the 3S and the BIP together. We will see you in just a few minutes. Take care.